I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Who in the Tour YouTube channel. And Eli's going to introduce it right here. Uh, we're going over numbers um, 17, 18. 18. 18. Speaking of the mic, little one. Um. <laughs> Come on, Cookie. Don't be scared. All right, we are oh, not going to intro man. from Eli. He's letting us down. Wow. Anyways, we are in numbers. We are going through the tour. We are grateful to have you guys as our family to sit down with us and sit around this little virtual area, wherever you're at. We appreciate you guys' time that you would spend with us, that you comment, that you put your input in. We appreciate every single one of you guys and appreciate all the time you would take just to uh, read the word with us. It's uh, really important that we do these things. It's beneficial to our souls. It's beneficial to our lives and our daily walk and everything that we do. So learning this is the most essential part of your day. And it is a commandment, right? We're supposed to write this on our hearts, minds, and souls. We're supposed to write it on the, the doorposts of our house, the gates of our, our field, the frontlets of our eyes. Um, it's supposed to be with us when we rise, right? When we get up in the morning, it's supposed to be the first thing that we talk about, right? Think about what, what are we, are we rolling over in bed? Are we praying before we even get out of bed? When we wake up, do we pray? Do we glorify Yah that he has given us another day that we can all be alive? Because life is not promised to us. Nothing is promised to us. We have been, we have been given absolutely everything. And the only thing that our creator asks for us back is just a little bit of obedience, and it's the same kind of obedience that our fathers, your dad, would like from you guys. It's the same that my dad, my stepdad would like from me. It's all about obedience, right? It's, it's a thing about respect. If you do not respect those who have given you guys the orders, that's called disrespectful, right? And if you guys are disrespectful, that means you don't care about what they have to say. So we're making a joke today, and I think the joke actually... Um, Stands and I mean I don't want this to offend anyone, but we actually uh, li listen to this. First demon one one. The laws of God are on the cross, right? This is what we hear all day long, every single day. First demon one two. Grace without works. That's it. First demon one three. Jesus is my Sabbath. First demon one four. The pork is good. Jesus made all food clean. Eat up. Right? Then it can go on and on and on. We have a tremendous amount of demonology that we have believed and that we are stuck into because we believe we don't read the Bible. First of all, we don't read the Bible. And that's the bottom line is everybody that comes against us and starts yelling at us has never read the Bible. You can quote them scriptures from two verses down where it completely annihilates their, their, their whole basis of, of them trying to get out from under the laws of Yah. But when you want to get out of the laws of Yah, that means you're okay being a murderer. It means you're okay being a pedophile. That means you're okay being an adulterer. That means you're okay being a fornicator. It means you're okay over. The list goes on and on and on. At some level, that is disgusting, and that is not what we should be. Okay. And it's something that you need to understand is that they only come at you with the words of Paul. If you took away Paul, they would have nothing to stand on. And what Peter said was, people that do not understand what Paul is actually reading, what he's actually trying to say to you, uh, they will turn it into something that is sinful. They will turn it into against the ways of Yah. They will turn it into something that is worldly and wicked. He said, you need to watch out for that because those without understanding, those that do not have the proper eyes to see and the ears to hear what he's actually writing to and what his full the full situation was that, and he was writing that, he said they'll take that and they'll use that as an excuse to basically live wickedly, live according to how this devil wants him to live. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, before we even begin, the guys, the letters of Paul are a one-way communication. You're only seeing one way of the communication. And I was making a joke yesterday that here's the reason, you know, we, there's no Torah commandment that says women need to cover their head. There's nothing that says that. And I got into a debate with a guy on 153news.net who's always trying to get women to cover their heads. And I'm like, look, you cannot take doctrine from a the words of Brother Shaul when you have a one-way communication. And let me, let me phrase this for you. This is probably the first part of the communication. Dear Brother Shaul, we thank you for being in our new church and for guiding us where you want us to be in our tiny ecclesia. We appreciate it. We have now gotten 15 women who are Nazarite women who want to be fully dedicated to Yahuwah. They want everything in their life to be fully dedicated to Yahuwah. And they don't want any outsiders to, to look upon them and have any kind of lust. And they don't want anyone else to sin because of their ravagious beauty. So they would go, how do we stop this from happening in our ecclesia? So Paul would write back and goes, oh, I got an easy answer for this. Have them cover their heads. 
Oh, they're like, oh, that's great. Whenever they're in the assembly of the Ecclesia, have them cover their heads, right? He, you are getting a response and an answer to a problem that these people in these little tiny churches have. And you can see this because he's talking about widows as well. He even qualifies what makes a good widow and what makes a bad widow. That is not in the Torah at all. So we got to be extremely careful with what we read, how we read it, and what we apply as our doctrine. And everything must be studied. Everything must be put together. And if you take one verse and, and abandon the laws of Yah, well, I, I guess you're not a chosen person of Yah. He doesn't, he doesn't want you. If you don't choose him, he doesn't choose you. So let's have at it and let's begin. Anyone have anything else? Uh, yeah, Paul said uh, we are free from the curse of death. But then he goes, does that mean we should abide in lawlessness? He goes, no, don't do that. He goes, we should be striving to work towards the glory of the Torah. We should be striving to work in the Torah. Since we are now free from the curse of death, we should be striving to do better than we were even doing before. Yeah, and you see stuff like that. Then you also see, and I think it was Acts 15, where they're... Uh, um, it's it's poorly written, right? Acts 15 is probably one of the most poorly written uh, chapters I've ever seen. And, it, you know, they're talking about circumcision. They're talking about the circumcision party. But then he's like, oh, well, uh, he says literally, um, it, don't worry about the laws of God. And don't worry about the circumcision. It doesn't matter. And how it's written, you, that one verse, you could go, okay, well, it doesn't matter. But the problem becomes, then it becomes these apostles become your Elohim. If, the, if you are following your God, Paul, then he, that's who your God is going to be. Unfortunately, when you die, you're going to probably end up in, in hell um, because Brother Shaul never said things like you are believing. And if you take one thing out of context, it's going to be a mess. All right, let's begin. We got the handy dandy split screen. Let's go, Eli. And almost got it one day we will have this down and my tablet just keeps getting a little slower it's like duct tape and rubber bands this thing is getting so slow all right and my sephir isn't quite ready numbers 18 all right here we go um anyone have anything how you guys doing good good jade how you doing everyone good looks like we might get a little bit of sun out there what and if that is we get sun what does that mean for you guys it means we had a bath of dogs bath of dogs 10 pit bulls and we got a hand pick them up and walk them across the long yard and they're very heavy they're like 100 pounds of pop and um, they hate bath day. The dogs absolutely hate bath day. I got one dog out of ten that'll two. actually like two dogs out of ten. Gideon loves the bath. Gideon does, but it's hard to get a hold of. We have one, uh, Mr. Bubs. He actually runs to the bath. Everybody else runs away from us, and it's like hide and go seek the pit bulls is what it is. And so they, they hate it. All right, here we go. Numbers 18. And Yahuwah said unto El Aron, You and your sons and your father's house with you shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. And you and your sons with you shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. Okay, so what does that tell you right there? Right out of the gate. So this comes from the last chapter where they were like, Aaron is sanctified, no one else is sanctified. This rod bloomed, and this means I've chosen Aaron as my chosen one. And so he's like, you are going to, when you when you mess up, you're going, when the priests mess up, you're bearing the wickedness. It's on you. Yeah, so it's interesting though. It is Aaron and his sons, right? So there's a lot of Levites, but there's only a couple that can be the big boys. All right. Two. And your brethren also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, bring with you that they may be joined unto you and minister unto you. But you and your sons with you shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. And they shall guard your watch and the watch of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar that neither they nor ye also die. And they... And they shall be joined unto you and guard the watch of the tabernacle of the assembly for all the service of the tabernacle and a stranger shall not come nigh unto you. And ye shall guard the watch of the sanctuary and the watch of the altar that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Yashrael. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levium, from among the children of Yashrael to you. They are a, as a gift for Yahuwah to do the service of the tabernacle of the assembly. Therefore, you and your sons with you shall guard your priest's office for everything of the altar, and within the veil ye shall serve, and ye shall serve. I have given your priest's office unto you as a service of gift, and the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. And Yahuwah has spoken to El Elrond, Behold, I also have given you the charge of my heave offerings of the, all the hallowed things of the children of Yashrael unto you, I, have I given them by reason of the anointing and to your sons by an ordinance forever? 
Okay, so what exactly is is happening here, folks? So basically, he says he gets what they the people bring. He the er, Levites get. Um. Yeah, and I mean, basically, he's putting it down. Who is doing what exactly? Right. He it's talking about the heave offerings right there. Um. He's these. He's basically pointing it out and probably pointing out to everybody that he's the dude in charge of all of this stuff. Don't come unto that. And this, I guess, goes back unto where like the high priest can't touch a dead body, right? Because this, these guys are literally set apart, like literally set apart that for, to Yah, and you can't, you can't get them dirty. I mean, it would just be, a, it would be a bad deal. All right, so ten, I think, right? Everyone, mm -hmm. okay, do you with me here? All right, in the most holy place shall ye eat it. Every male shall eat it. It shall be holy unto you. All this is yours. The heave offering of their gift. With all the wave offerings of the children of Yashrael, I have given them unto you, and to your sons, and to your daughters with you, by a statute forever. Everyone that is cling in your house shall eat of it. All the best of the oil, and all the best of the wine, and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto Yahuwah, them have I given you. And whatsoever is first ripe in the land, which they shall bring unto Yahuwah, shall be yours. Everyone that is cling in your house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Yashrael shall be yours. Everything that opens the womb in all flesh, which they bring unto Yahuwah, whether it be of men or beasts, shall be yours. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall you surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts shall you redeem. All right, I think I just had an epiphany. I think I understand this whole setting apart thing. This is how the priests end up with stuff, right? This is how they get paid. Right, so all the firstly, everything, because the priests have no land, they have no nothing, they don't have any inheritance in Yashrael, except, and I guess that's the greatest exception, is Yah, then this is how they get paid, because everybody that is firstborn unto all the other ones, if you're a firstborn male, you gotta redeem them, right? And so they're going to they're going to pay these guys a, a redeeming price, and, and the same for everything, right? So do they pay the Levites, or do the Levites pay the people? So I think, it's, I think there's a different thing because one of the verses we saw earlier that if a person wanted to sanctify their field, say he wanted to put a piece of the field as um, dedicated, he would go to the priest and the priest would, would decide how much it was and the priest would give him money and that became the priest. Right. So I think there's, I don't, what was your but question? But how does it work for people? I think they give them, I think they so have the to give Levites them money. the Levites pay the people? No, the Levites don't the pay. the people pay the Levites? The people pay the Levites to redeem the firstborn. Okay. Right? And so all, everybody's paying the Levites to redeem the firstborn. And that is, that is how the Levites would always have cash. Because there's always, there'd always be firstborns. So a generation, you would always have a firstborn. And then that next generation would have the firstborn. And the next year, everybody would have a firstborn. And then if you have a cow, and it's a heifer, and the cow has a baby, and it has a calf, if, it's, if it was a heifer that it never had a baby before, and then it had a baby, that firstborn would be sanctified to Yah. Yeah, because if you read down a little bit further, it says that they are not redeemed. Right, right. No, and they, they kill, they kill, some of them they kill, some of them are a cash redemption, like the, the Levites actually pay other people for the field or what, I, I don't know how that works exactly, but this is a, um, this is a system of finances, and so sorry guys for that, um, we gotta turn off Telegram guys, everything devoted in Yashrael shall be yours. Everything that opens the womb in all flesh, when they bring unto Yahuwah, whether it be of men or of beasts, shall be yours. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall you surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts you shall redeem. Okay, so first man has to be redeemed, right? You couldn't not redeem man or you would end up killing him, right? And those that are to be redeemed from a month old shall you redeem, according to your estimation. For the money of five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is 20 gyaras. All right, so all those that need to be redeemed from a month old, you shall redeem. Okay, so yeah, they have to, I mean, you're looking at five shekels, right? If you want to redeem them, you have a firstborn, it's going to cost you something, right? If you have a firstborn son, it's going to cost you money. If you have a firstborn cow, it's going to cost you money. But it's it's only a one-time gig. Right, and it even, I think that's where it came in, like in a few chapters back, I don't remember which one, where it was talking about what the price of each one is. Like the right. girls were less, the boys right. were a little more. Right, yeah, and so there is a, an entire system of sanctifying yourself, basically setting yourself apart and redeeming yourself. And it all comes down to paying the Levites. I guess that goes into one quick question right here. Tithing. Is tithing for today? 
No. I saw Jim Staley do a video, and of course Jim is going to say, absolutely, tithing is to Verde. Everybody needs to get paid. We should all get paid. Everybody pay. Give me your 10%. I'll take your 10% here. Let's do it. Let's make it a better place, right? That is actually unbiblical, right? You would ne If you're taking money from a person like this, and this is why this, this family does not take donations at all. We will never, ever, ever, ever take a donation from the people of y'all. Uh, if you guys want to donate to Boss Clan, I'll tell you, number one, how to do it. Number one, go buy five pounds of rice and put it in your own, your own little thing. The second thing that you guys can do if you guys want to donate to Boss Clan is the next time that you guys see somebody with a cardboard box that is sitting up alongside the road and it says need help, if you will take five minutes and if you will sit down with that person and if you will give that person a big hug and give them a, just a huge hug and let them know that it's not only, you know, there there's a better way and however they ended up where they're at, Yah still loves them. Our creator still loves them and they were maybe sit there for that moment that you could sit there and you could explain Yah's Torah, the, his son and everything to them and give them a hug and pray with these people. And if you if you want to if you want to donate to Boss Clan, that is the best way that you guys can do that. Pray with these people and show them just a little bit of love. That's all we want. And um, that would be the greatest gift you could ever give anyone, especially those guys sitting on the side of the road. Don't don't turn your blind eye to them. There's there's too many of them. Sit with them. If there's a whole tent of people, sit with them and talk to them. Become one of them and love them and show them love. All right. Seventeen. Seventeen. But the first lean of a cow, or the first lean of a sheep, or the first lean of a goat, you shall not redeem. They are holy. You shall sprinkle their blood upon the altar and shall burn their fat for an offering made by fire for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And the flesh of them shall be yours as the wave breast and as the right shoulder are yours. Okay, so here, here again, if it's, if, it's, if it's a brand new, it's the first calf off of a, uh, the heifer, brand new, that's the food for the Levites, right? That is always food for the Levites, regardless if people are sinning or not. Because if they are sinning, then they always have food. If they are trying to offer sacrifices, they always have food. But here, if, they're, if these people are actually not living in sin and there's not continual sacrifices, everything firstborn has to be redeemed. And so the Levites would always have food. And with like two million people, there's always going to be like cattle. You're always, and people always, everything's going to be giving birth consistently. There's always new life, consistently always firstborns at all yeah, times. a lot of them. So the priests were taking care of. Yah has, I mean, this is, this is an amazing business plan. If you guys look at a business plan like this and how to set something up that doesn't fail, this is it. This is amazing. All right, 19. All the heave offerings of the holy things, which the children of Yashrael offer unto Yahuwah, have I given you, and your sons and your daughters with you by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt before you, before Yahuwah, unto you and to your seed with you. Does it say a covenant yeah. of salt? Yeah, mine does. Mm -hmm. A covenant it, of salt. Tastes good. I don't know. Uh, it does taste good. I don't know. Not good for my heart, but I say it tastes good. All right. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Eron. You shall have no inheritance in their land, neither shall you have any part among them. I am your part and your inheritance among the children of Yashrael. So, is that a good thing or a bad thing? You have no land. I huh. think that's good because they're more blessed than all the rest. They're like, y'all's going to take care of them more than any of the rest this, of the tribes, I would assume. This system only works in the land of Yah, right? Because if there's no temple, no sacrifices, all these Levites go starving. So all these Levites probably had to take up second jobs uh, at a certain point, I mean, this this was perfect in a land where Yah was dwelling with them and where they were keeping the commandments and where they were doing this. But when they fall out of it and they go into, you know, these people, they would just become normal people at that point. All right, 21. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Yashrael for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the assembly. See, the preacher isn't a... A Levite here, and no preacher in anything is going to be a Levite, especially one sitting in a pulpit. He's not uh, one of the ordained ones. He's just teaching the word as you were supposed, to, as everybody in Israel. He's not was, teaching. No, that is incorrect. Like, well, he's well, that's what he's supposed to be doing. He's supposed, he's to, be supposed to be. But doing everyone that. was supposed to be doing that in Israel, anyways. Everyone was supposed to be like a preacher to the entire congregation of Israel. Do the entire churches all they will preach on is the New Testament, right, and but, they will they will not preach on the laws. Grace. Yeah, grace. It's all about grace. Ah, oh, thank you for the grace, and we can live in sin, and we are now just... Well, uh, the point I'm trying to get across here is everyone was I preach, supposed to be a preacher in Israel. Everyone was supposed to be teaching the commands. Everyone was supposed to be teaching it. Everyone was supposed to be knowing it, and that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to tell it to your children. You're supposed to tell it to your neighbors, and that's, that's supposed to be a daily job. It's not something you go and get paid for. Hey, here's, uh, here's the word. Now you pay me some money. Yes, and that... Please stop popping your knuckles. 
Thank you, buddy. That's a very good point. Very, neither must the children of Yashrai hunts forth come nigh the tabernacle of assembly, lest they bear sin and die. Okay, so nobody comes before the tabernacle of assembly. Yeah, it's over this point. And, and remember Korah. where Korah, yeah, Korah went into the doorway, right? They were like mm -hmm. all standing in the doorway of this place. Bad After news. After Korah, yeah. I was like, that's Mo it. No one comes near this. Moshe knew. Moshe knew that was bad news. He's too smart for them. He's way too smart. He's been through too much. Yep. But the Levium shall do the service of the tabernacle of assembly, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations that among the children of Yashrael they have no inheritance. But the tithes of the children of Yashrael, which they offer as a heave offering unto Yahuwah, I have given to the Levium to inherit. Therefore I have said unto them, Among the children of Yashrael they shall have no inheritance. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Thus speak unto the Levium, and say unto them, We need take of the children of Yashrael the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up a heave offering of it for Yahuwah, even a tenth part of the tithe. And this is your heave offering shall be wrecked, and this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you, as though it were the grain of the threshing floor, and as the fullness of the wine press. Um, anyone know what's going on? JJ Pantage. Yeah. So? No, he's saying that. Uh, and when this you, is your heave offering. When what? you when you give to Yahuwah the uh, contribution, he's like he's going to fill all of our stuff. He's going to be reckoned to you as a grain offering. He'll be filling from the wine press. It's like a blessing from them when you give this to Yah. Right, but a um, like a, a heave offering, as it were, it says as though it were the grain of the threshing floor, and as the fullness of the wine press. So it's almost like you're giving a uh, first fruits. So mine on twenty seven says, and what you lift out and keep, your heave offering shall be credited to you as though it were the grain of the threshing floor, or as a ripe, fully ripe produce of the vine. So I think that's a better gig. I think giving your fir your first fruits to Yah is like is more profound, I guess, than this is what he's saying, maybe. All right, 28. Thus ye shall also, thus ye shall, I screwed that all up. Let me try it a third time. Thus ye also shall offer a heave offering unto Yahuwah of all your tithes, which ye receive of the children of Yashrael, and ye shall give thereof Yahuwah's heave offering to Aaron the priest. Out of all your gifts ye shall offer every heave offering of Yahuwah, of all the best thereof, even the hollowed part out of it. Therefore you shall say unto them, When ye have heaved the best thereof from it, then it shall be counted unto the Levium as the increase of the threshing floor, and as the increase of the winepress. And ye shall eat it in every place, ye in your households, for it is your reward for your service in the tabernacle of the assembly. And ye shall bear no sin by reason of it. When ye have heaved from it the best of it, neither shall ye pollute the holy things of the children of Yashrael, lest ye die. Okay. What do we got? So the bear no sin when you bring the best of it. Like, don't... I think you're supposed to do it voluntarily. You're not supposed to do it out of, like, a hardened heart with... Uh, or yeah, give, like, you're second best, right? You want to give the best to Yah. Look, if you give Yah something and your one hand is still on the basket and you're not, like, quite let it, ready to let go of it and you're, like, here and you keep pulling back a little bit, that's not what he's after, right? He wants you to give this with a, a full heart that you are willing to do you know, all of this stuff for him. And so these are still more Levitical stuff. Any commands in here, gentlemen? Um, I don't think anything we can do since we have no Levites. And um, yeah, I don't think so. No, but something that you should keep in mind is to always give your best to Yah. Yeah. Always do your best for Yah, whatever it is you're doing. Whether it's going out to preach the word to someone or it's always do your best. Always do it with a, the full, your full heart into it. Yeah, go with the spirit of, of Yahshua or Caleb or something of the sort, right? That is the kind of spirit that, that our creator wants in all of us, right? We can do this, right? Don't be scared. If you guys are deciding you want to, to donate a little bit to Boss Clan and you guys uh, go want to go sit with one of those families out there, don't be scared. Don't Trust me, do not be scared. These people that you're sitting with are going to be a little more worried than you are about who this is. And look, when you sit down with them and you give them a smile and you give them some love, let the Ruha Kakadesh guide you. Let the love of Yah guide you guys and give those guys a big hug. And it doesn't matter if they're gringy or dirty or stink real bad or any of that stuff. It doesn't matter, right? They're still loved and they're still creations of our creator. And where and how they ended up where they are at, only Yah would know. But, you know, you guys could sit down and you could find out and they would love to talk with you. I mean, the, the more time you spend with these people, the more time you will understand them, the more love that you will have because the poor people are the people who are you're supposed to be loving and taking care of regardless, for sure. 
All right, anyone have anything else? Uh, those people that you, you meet on the side of the road, the people that are there, they're there, they're broken right there. They've gone through it all. They've, they're having a dark time, and you can be that light. They're just looking for a little bit of light, something to look forward to, something that is a blessing to them, and you teaching the word, and you just showing them that they're loved and showing them the love of Yahusha is, is going to bring them light, no, even if you don't think it does much, even if you walk away feeling it doesn't, it didn't do much, you didn't feel good about it, they're going to remember that moment their entire lives, and they're going to remember that this person came in Yah's name and sat there and teach them the word and taught them what love was. Right. Silver and gold, they may have none. You may have none of that, right? You don't need, don't, don't look away because your pockets are empty, right? Because all of our pockets are empty. Look at them and give them love. Give them the respect that they deserve as being children of the Most High. They wouldn't be where they are at if they had absolutely any choice ever. So we hope you guys can donate to Boss Clan. We absolutely need it. Um, we would love to have your donations. And if you guys can ever donate, please let us know. And put us where you guys donated at. And let us know what life you guys changed. Let, know, let us know how your life changed when you start doing that. And if you guys get in a routine of this, I promise you guys, you guys will, will find the greater parts of life right now that we need to do this and minister to those people out there who need this. So, all right, guys, let's wrap this all up. Right, well, tonight Jake. is also Youth for Y'all. Yes, Youth for Y'all. Everybody live, 6 o'clock our time. We don't know what time that is. Your time. And um, then we also have Shabbat morning live, hopefully. Um, we will see you guys on Shabbat mornings. Um, we do it I, at 10 o'clock our time, which I don't know what time that is. Yours, Central so. Standard. I don't know what that is, but regardless, um, that is the time we do it here. And if you guys can mark it to your calendars, then we will uh, get in sync with the, all of you guys. And our family is your family. Our tribe is your tribe. We love you guys with the, the love of Yah. And we ask that you are blessed. And Yah, may Yah's hand bless everyone that's out there. May he guide you guys. May he make this day right for you guys. May you guys forever venture in his love, forever venture in his word, and for forever understand the love of Messiah Yahushua, whether he came and delivered us a gift that we can never, ever get paid back, ever. That's All right. it. Shalom. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Shalom. All right. We're out.